piece that I'm working on at the moment is called House and it's very simply the cast of the inside of a house. What I'm actually doing is working on the interior walls of the house and literally making a building within a building. looking at the domestic as sort of, you know, in terms of relationships and relationships with people, relationships that people have with their, with their home. center of the house is the center of magnetic force that attracts us towards a major zone of protection. And there were petitions to try and keep it up. I mean, everything you can possibly imagine kind of went on, obviously. Um, and then it was knocked down. It's a shame, I think, that it could, didn't have a chance to become invisible, like architecture becomes invisible. Um, and I think that's an interesting aspect, and maybe it's something that I, I will sort of work with at some point. But um, this wasn't meant to be with this piece and it had this, this sort of fight for life. And, you know, now it's a park with closed gates and people sort of throw their dogs over the fence to have a shit in there. And it's, you know, that's sort of what the place is now. And it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it really is ridiculous. And there's probably very few countries in the world that would do that to, a, you know, an artwork that had been such a, a success in many ways. But, you know.
Number 193 Grove Road used to be an exceptional Victorian house in the east end of London. Mile End, E3, three-storey end of terrace Victorian house, four beds, two receipts, original features. In such way, an estate agent might have described it. Extensively remodelled, improved beyond habitability, it has become both monument and memorial. It has become Rachel's White Reed House, a strange and fantastical object which also amounts to one of the most extraordinary and imaginative public sculptures created by an English artist this century. 193 Grove Road is no longer a home, but the ghost of one perpetuated in art. It has no doors, no windows, no walls and no roof. It was made simply by filling a house with liquid concrete and then stripping the mould away from it. The result could be described as the opposite of a house, since what it consists of is a cast of the spaces once contained by one. People loved that piece. They absolutely loved what it was, the memory of these homes. You know, people, they were just knocking buildings down, these houses down, right left and centre. If you wanted to create the goings on inside that building, the life of that building, she wanted to express that, the memory of everything that went on in there. And, and it was unbelievable to watch when, when they finally stripped this thing away, and there it was. As soon as you take that memory in that place, that, that memory was there. It existed only in that place and through that time. To take it somewhere else, it's something else altogether. We had a limited amount of time in terms of planning approval. Uh, and, and once they had planning permission, they were limited in the, amount, in the amount of time it was allowed to stay in place. So, Given that, they had, to find, they had to find an entirely different way of doing it because it was not the time to cast every piece of every room, take it away, strip the house down, build a steel frame, build a back. We used to use this technique, and when you cast concrete, sometimes the mortar between the, between the aggregate doesn't go in properly, and you get something called honeycomb. I don't know if you've ever seen it. When you pour concrete, you can see the aggregate, there are gaps in it. And the, the way you fix it, or the way we were fixing it there, is by spraying concrete onto it. The technique is called gunite. But it's incredibly uh, strong, um, and also it's very it sticks, which you fire it at the thing, the surface, and it sticks to it. And this seems to be that we have to form a structure and so the idea that the structure was the, the kind of skin itself seemed to me to be a, potentially a way of doing it and doing it very quickly. Um, and so we worked with Tama, the contractor.
spraying concrete is fantastic because because you spray it and it sticks, right? But then, but then the interesting thing is you want it to stick first, and then you want it not to stick. You're going to peel away the building from the outside. The tarmac developed a specific um, coating for the walls, which would allow the concrete to stick initially, and then it had the delayed release mechanism. So after the concrete had dried and become solid and stiff, structurally sound, the coating between the concrete and the building itself can change its properties entirely. So it became, uh, instead of this sticking, it released. So the moment you peeled the brickwork away, the mess from the outside, it came away from the concrete without pulling away any of the concrete. The, it was absolutely the intention to, to, to try to recreate the texture of the, the walls and the ceiling, the floor, without any other, without any other articulation or any other detail. Purely, purely as much of the detail of the space as you could. And, and, I, and I think, again, um, Rather incredibly, the detail that was, came out of the spraying was was unbelievable. Even to the point, the texture of the the wallpaper you could read the texture of the wallpaper in the concrete. Yeah. It, it was amazing. It's the end of the movie, said Lingwood, as we studied details left in the concrete mould. True, there was a sad finality about this last mute ride in the life of that particular hive of London, life that had been 193 Grove Road. And something valiant too, like with all art, it makes you think, but it doesn't tell you what to think. How many years later are you and I talking about a house? 1993, you told me. 2003, 2000, it's 25 years later. 